Hey, I'm replacing the uh, bearings on the 50 inch deck of my John Deere 318 and I didn't see any good tutorials on YouTube about this and it's kind of uh, a little bit of work so I figured I'd make a film and show everybody how to do it. Uh, first thing I did was take the deck off. Um, I already got started here. I'm going to go back and catch up. I took off these covers from the top of the deck and that exposed the uh, the belt and the pulleys and um, the first bearing I'm going to replace here is this one, I've already got it apart uh, what I did was uh, the pulley was bolted on right here all I did was get a 1 and an eighth inch uh, impact socket and the nut came right off um, then when you go around to the other side you can see that there's three bolts that hold the assembly on and then just a blade so just pop, pop this uh, bolt off pull the blade off then loosen these uh, actually one of which broke all they are is these uh, carriage bolts and they have the uh, square behind the head and that's what locks them into place. So if you look at the housing, it has a square shaped holes so that the bolt fits in and doesn't spin. Notice on the pulley there is a, uh, a key notch into it and that's going to be very important when we uh, go over here and we see the shaft that I've already pulled out and you can see there's a notch in there and this is the key that was in that notch So what I did, uh, I've already got this pulled apart here, it's pretty simple. I uh, put this in my bench vise, clamped down, uh, I was careful not to clamp down on the spindle that went through it, this is all one unit here. I was careful just to clamp down on the housing itself. Then I pulled the key out, kind of tapped it out, and ended up uh, pulling out with some vice grips. It took a little bit of work. From there I put a punch on the end uh, that was smaller diameter. I didn't want to damage any of the threads just by smashing with a hammer and uh, slowly tapped until it went through. Pulled it out, now it's separate. So now I've got this housing and you can see there's a bearing right here which I've already applied some uh, lubricant to to kind of break up all the rust around it. It's going to be fun getting this out and there's a giant snap ring that I was uh, kind of fighting with and I just broke that loose. That's why I decided I might want to record this to show anybody else who's having the same kind of trouble that I am. Um, if you have a, a press, obviously it's going to be easier for you. I don't, so I'm going to show you the uh, hard way to do it. So I finally was able to get the snap ring started to come out. Uh, a lot of times there'll be little two little pinholes that you can use snap ring pliers with which will pinch it together and able to pull it out. This doesn't have that so you just gotta kinda jab at it with a screwdriver for a while and eventually I was able to get it started and once I got it to pop out a little bit I got it in there with this little tiny screwdriver with a really sharp tip and uh, pried in between that and the housing and was able to kinda get it started. Then from there just kept popping it up and it's about ready to come out now. There it goes. And there's the bearing. There's also another snap ring on the other side of that. Uh, come over here online to look at the diagram. Uh, this is the way I have it right now where um, the spindle came out in the bottom and then we have the snap ring I just took out, the bearing, 
then another snap ring, then here's the housing, and then in between the, the snap ring and the other bearing is just a metal spacer which kind of uh, floats around inside uh, which the shaft goes through. So what I'm going to do is I flip it back up this way in my vise and I am trying to punch the bearing, the bottom bearing, out through. So here we are and if you can see down inside there uh, that's the spacer that's kind of off-centered there and it just kind of floats around inside. Now what I'm doing is I am tapping on that spacer that you can see part of right there with a punch um, and then that is pushing the bearing through uh, using this big punch at first and then it kind of tapers or I'm sorry it gets wider where it wouldn't go in through the top bearing anymore so I switched to a smaller punch here and I'm just on that uh, that spacer tapping putting pressure on the bearing and you can see the bearing has just started to slide out and I'm obviously going to need to replace this spacer after this because it's getting kind of chewed up for me hitting on it Felt good, there it is, coming out, out. Uh, and there is one old bearing. All right, now I'm gonna take this out and you can see the inside here. Oh, there's the spacer that fell out. Uh, it's kind of definitely chewed up now. Well, I got a new one, so that's good. You can see the inside here, and under that grease is the inside snap ring. So I'm gonna work on that. You know what, actually, thinking about back to that diagram, um, I don't think I need to take out that inner snap ring. So I'm gonna leave it, and just go ahead and hit directly on the bearing, and pop that out. First, I'm gonna clean up that grease, and now I've got a big opening. I'm gonna find a large socket that I can put in there and just use that as a, uh, as a uh, spacer to hit the bearing out with. Okay, I wiped a lot of that grease out of there just with a uh, paper towel on my finger. And I've got a socket. This is a 15 16 inch impact socket. And I'm gonna drop that in there. And then hit this to push that through. Uh, you can see I've got a little bit of play. So I probably got it gone, you know, inch to inch and an eighth on the uh, socket size. All right, I've got the old bearings and spacer on the left, and the new bearings and spacer on the right. Um, you can get these from John Deere, or you can get them off eBay. Uh, they're obviously cheaper off eBay, and I think they ran about uh, something like six bucks. And then they got the spacer for I think four bucks. And I'm glad I did because there's no way I could reuse this one. So of course they recommend a uh, bushing press uh, to get these back in here. I don't have one. So right now I've got my new bearings sitting in the freezer and the cold uh, should contract them a tiny bit and we'll see if I'm able to slide those in there with just using a bench vise. Okay, we had these sitting in the fridge for a little while. Try one first, and I found a socket that's going to be the same as this outer diameter here, the real thin part, happened to be 32 millimeters. Uh, you don't want to put you know pressure on this part; you could damage the bearing. 
Okay, I got this started just a tiny bit. Uh, I tapped it in with a rubber mallet as to not do any damage. And now I'm going to position this in my vise here. A little bit more room for my socket. Turn it, uh, turn it this way, flat side. Make sure I'm lined up. Slowly crank it down. See? There's a better angle for you. I'm going to take a look in there and just make sure I'm not going too far. All right, you want to you want to stop when the uh, bearing is flush with the surface, just like it was before. And I'm at that point. Now I'm going to put the spacer in the middle, and then I'll do the other bearing. Okay, remember all that grease that was in there before? Uh, these are sealed bearings, so you never have to actually grease them. But um, I'm going to guess all that grease was in there around the spacer just to uh, help displace any moisture. Uh, especially if you wash the deck after you mow, a lot of water gets down in there. Um, like I said, I had grass growing inside under, my, under the cover on the top of mine. So, grease gun. I'm going to load up with some grease. Uh, and then I will place in the spacer. All right, there's some grease. Here's the spacer. Dropping that in. And I'm gonna throw a little bit more grease in this area here just to fill that in and then I'm gonna grab the other bearing. Now you notice that it's not packed 100% tight uh, with the grease. I left a little bit of space because uh, as these parts are used, uh, they're going to get warm and expand. Same with that grease. And I don't want anything to uh, have too much pressure to where it you know, leaks into the bearings or something like that since they're sealed. I want to leave a little bit of room in there just in case. And again, I'm no professional uh, John Deere repairman. That's just the way I thought to do it. Our ice cold bearing. Tell you what, freezer makes a lot of difference. It's ready to go right in. Without a press, it's already halfway in. So I'm going to throw this on here, uh, same way I did with the other one, with my 32 millimeter socket, and I'm going to push it back in far enough to the point where I'm able to uh, get the snap ring back in. I think it'll be pretty close to the end here. Yeah, that's gonna be it. All right, take a look inside there. That's where it should be. I've got the groove for the snap ring. 
and the spacer is where it belongs inside there. Hey kitty. Alright, here's a look at the snap ring and if there is a certain kind of tool for this, I don't have it. Um, here's the ones that I have. I pry it out with a screwdriver. Not sure how I'm going to get it back in. Probably with a screwdriver. Okay, this seems to work pretty well. I got one end of the snap ring set. Use vice grips to hold it in place. And my plan is to just go around and push this in. There it goes. In. Alright, I got the spindle here. Um, this is going to go in through the bottom, which is actually upside down right now, so it's the top. Also a tight fit, so I'm going to throw this in the freezer for a little bit as well, and that should help this slide right in. Okay, back from the freezer. You know, I went ahead and also uh, put some grease on the inside of these bearings here, uh, just in hopes that it might help this uh, from ever seizing up should water ever seep in. Shit. Push the bearing out. <laughs> All right. Not a big deal. Hopefully, just tap this back in. More light taps for good measure. Okay. Making sure it's perfectly centered on that outer ring. So I don't want to damage the bearing. This should be good. Next, I gotta put that key back in. Okay, the key's been in the freezer for a few minutes, about five minutes. Um, it's about five to ten minutes is usually enough. It's about all it's going to take to uh, get this thing cold up to shrink down. But you can see, it kind of pops right in there. And I'm going to finish with this hammer. All right, I'm gonna need two hands to uh, put this back in here. So I'm gonna show you a little bit here in this exploded view of what's gonna happen. I'm going to uh, pick this up. I got my three bolts, uh, including my new one that I replaced in here. I'm gonna pick this up. 
place it right here. Go around to the other side. And these three bolts are going to be sticking through those holes. Then I'm going to put on the washer, the lock washer, and the nut on each one of those. So then when I go tighten that down, uh, back on the other side, on the top of the deck this way, I'm going to see this coming through. You notice on the pulley, one side is uh, a little bit deeper than the other side. The deeper side goes on the shaft. The thinner side has the nut that goes over it. Okay, I've got the three bolts in the bottom back in. They're tightened down. Back up here in the top of the deck, I hit that big nut with the impact wrench and just tight. Everything's back together on the inner side of the deck. Now I flip it back over and uh, got the belt reinstalled. And now I'm going to put these two covers back on.